Welcome to the Sales Podcast, Session 52. Let's fund this crowd. Welcome to the 52nd edition of the Sales Whisperer Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, your host, The Sales Whisperer. Today, we've got Manolis Svenarlakis. Say that fast 10 times. He specializes in crowdfunding. Uh, which has really been taken off lately. You've heard uh, things about you know, Kickstarter and Indiegogo and whatnot. Um, I've contributed money to a couple of uh, different causes, friends of mine, people that I know that are uh, raising money to start businesses. Uh, so I thought it was a good idea to have him on to kind of explain this world. So with the economy and business in mind, today's funny is around an investor that was talking with his advisor and he says, is all of my money really gone? And the advisor said, no, of course not. It's just with somebody else. Uh, and I spent some time as a financial guy. I got my Series 7 and 63 and 65 and life insurance, even property and casualty. Oh, I can tell you that is the truth. You know, there was another old joke that said, uh, you know, why did God make uh, stockbrokers to make weathermen look good? And as a former weatherman, I can tell both of those jokes. Um, we always got picked on, but not today, because today is my day. I work diligently towards my goals, which are bigger than me. I bite off more than I can chew, because only then will I truly know my current limits, and surpassing them becomes my new goal for today. Through education, accountability partners, and bold, decisive action, today will be better than yesterday, and tomorrow will be better yet. I'm ready to produce. If you'd like to produce more sales automatically while you sleep, check out the saleswhisper.com and sign up for a demo of Infusionsoft. Uh, I have used that since 2008 uh, to automate literally every part of my business, marketing, sales, even the internal workflows, uh, task assignment, product fulfillment, uh, and all the follow-up, uh, both before the sale and after the sale. Uh, so sign up for a demo there. Uh, someone from my team will be in touch with you, maybe even me. Uh, we'll see if Infusionsoft is right for you. And I'll show you exactly how I use it, uh, how I built a rather successful business, uh, becoming the number one reseller of Infusionsoft the last two and a half years uh, without adding headcount, uh, without uh, an office, without paying for advertising, with no outbound calling. Uh, I'll show you exactly how I did it. So again, go visit thesaleswhisper.com and check out the Infusionsoft demo. And now, without further ado, our guest of honor. This is my most difficult introduction to date, but I'm going to nail it. Manolis Svenarolakis, Reality Crowd TV. Welcome to the Sales Podcast. Thanks a lot, Wes. Uh, pleasure to be here. Did I get it right? Did I get it right? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, you did. You you got it right. <laughs> All right. Just making sure. You can hear me, right? Yes, I could. I think it, it lagged a little bit, but now I can hear you. All right. So you are out at South by Southwest, is that right, in Austin? That is correct. Uh, from Connecticut, and I made my way and made this journey over to South by Southwest and really enjoying Austin, Texas so far. Oh, I'm jealous, man. I lived there for five years. I grew up in Houston. Uh, that's our favorite city. I think I'm going to have to start going to South by Southwest. I haven't been... And uh, but I think it's time. What do you think? You know, I, I would say yes. Uh, I would just, you know, make sure you plan out your days. And uh, I'm I'm just kind of wandering around. I didn't really do much planning and just seeing where I end up. And it's it's been a journey. Just let me tell you that it's been a journey. But it's uh, it's it's definitely something you need to plan for. <laughs> Very nice. Well, would you take uh, mind taking a, a minute or two and and give everyone kind of an update on. Uh, what you do, how you came to uh, to running this unique uh, Reality Crowd TV? Yes, yeah, so thank you for giving me that opportunity, Wes. So Reality Crowd TV is a grassroots reality TV show about the crowdfunding movement. And for those uh, listeners that you have that are not really familiar with crowdfunding, uh, it's, it's, it's better known for Kickstarter.com. And if, if you take the concept of passing around the basket at church, where a group of people financial resources to someone who has a need, take that concept, put it online, and apply it to artistic endeavors, products, businesses, really anything that the imagination could come up with. Put that concept online and you have crowdfunding. And it's a beautiful thing. 
project creators who have who have a dream. Let's say you're an artist and you want to professionally record your music CD. You could put your idea online. Uh, you can receive donations from complete strangers, and in exchange for those donations, you can offer an incentive or a reward in order to entice them to donate towards your project. So, in the case of an artist, for instance, uh, they might offer the finished product of the CD for a $25 contribution towards the overall funding goal. So. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take that excitement that is inherent in this crowdfunding movement and create the shark tank without the bite. So so instead of a group of sharks criticizing someone's idea, we're looking to have a group of panelists who come in, help, help an entrepreneur, help a project creator really know how to crowdfund so that eventually the American public becomes the sharks. Gotcha. And when did this whole crowdfunding thing take off? It seems like like overnight it's just everywhere. You know, it's uh, it's really been going on for a while now. I mean, really, Kickstarter made everything pretty famous. They, they started back in 2009. Uh, but what really got things uh, smoking and moving and shaking is the uh, equity crowdfunding that is coming into play. And, um, and, and are you familiar with the, with the equity crowdfunding, Wes? No. Yeah, this is, this is the most interesting piece here. Uh, back in 2012, the government said, if it's working for donations where complete strangers are putting their money into someone's dream, uh, would it work for raising capital for small businesses? And to give you a, an idea of, of how well it's worked for donations, uh, Kickstarter, since 2009, has funded over 55,000 projects by over 5.5 million unique donors and they just reached the one billion in funding raised mark. So, this is just one site alone. So the government said, "Wow, this is this is incredible. Can it work for equity? Could it work for small businesses trying to raise capital?" And what they did, they passed the 2012 Jobs Act, which states, instead of a contribution being a donation, and instead of that donation, you know, being enticed by a reward that is being offered by the project creator. Let's flip the script a little bit. Now, whenever anyone makes a contribution, as soon as all these rules are finalized, which hopefully by the end of this year, people will begin doing equity crowdfunding in the form of uh, Title III equity crowdfunding. Now, if you make a contribution, your reward is purchasing a share directly in this private company trying to raise capital this way, or it is lending this company money and earning interest Uh, on the actual loan made to this company. So to put it in the simplest terms possible, even though this is a very complex thing going on in America, to put it in the simplest terms possible, Wes, they're essentially creating a stock market for private companies through crowdfunding and only through the Internet. Does Does that make sense? Oh, sorry about that. I had you on mute. Um, is that going to be better for the person raising the money? Because, you know, not giving up equity seems like a good thing for the person raising money. I mean, is it, is it just a chocolate and vanilla kind of option now for somebody so they have a choice? Or, or is this equity crowd, crowdfunding going to be better? Well, you know, that is that is an excellent point, And it really depends on the project because – Rewards-based crowdfunding will always be around for creative projects and uh, for charities and things of that nature. But inherently, certain companies just don't fit the mold where people would want to donate and receive some sort of reward. Maybe some companies are uh, information-driven, and and they may not be able to give an enticing enough reward in order for someone to donate. So based on your company... Equity crowdfunding and debt crowdfunding will probably be a better option for companies that cannot start their path through the rewards-based crowdfunding. So if if they're not Kickstarter ready, then uh, they, they may consider going to equity crowdfunding instead. Well, it seems like, and, and I don't understand this whole, whole industry, but it seems like the, a Kickstarter, somebody really brand new versus the equity, it would seem like you'd have to be more... Uh, advanced uh, along the the product creation cycle and creation of a company, etc. Is that not correct? I would say that is correct. 
<laughs> even though there will be startup companies using equity crowdfunding, as I mentioned, if, if they can't fit the mold for Kickstarter, this form of equity crowdfunding is available not only for existing and established businesses, it is available for startup businesses, which, as you know, is inherently a very risky investment. Mm-hmm. So what's what's interesting is what I recommend personally is if you have a product-oriented uh, company, you're going to want to start your journey out in this rewards-based Kickstarter model. Uh, that way, by going this way, you're testing it. There's not much regulation around rewards-based crowdfunding. You can go ahead, prove your concept through rewards-based crowdfunding, and then if you need another round of capital, then you'd be better positioned to get equity through this equity crowdfunding model or maybe a VC now who didn't give you the time of day previously, a venture capitalist, will now see that you proved your concept through Kickstarter. So I'll give this guy a chance now. I'm willing to invest in his company. Gotcha. How much did you say Kickstarter has raised? Was it billions? They've raised a billion. Uh, they, they just passed the one billion in uh, funding raised. But this is this is the more interesting story as well. There are one of thousands of these different websites that allow funding through awards-based crowdfunding. Right. The industry as a whole in 2013 raised five billion alone in one year. Wow. The World Bank in uh, in November of 2013, the World Bank released a report. They estimate that in 20 years. Crowdfunding will be a ninety billion dollar industry. Uh, when when these equity rules came out, this equity crowdfunding rules came out. UC Berkeley College released a report, and although this won't happen immediately because obviously crowdfunding is very new, it's going to take a while before the market size reaches what they estimate. But they estimate that the U.S. equity market size for crowdfunding is a three hundred billion dollar market. Yeah, that, already. Not already. They they they, um, they they say that if it reaches its potential, they believe that this market for funding, because it's really people funding people as opposed to banks or VCs who tend to only have criteria that are black and white, they estimate that eventually the market could reach $300 billion a year. Yeah. I mean, I can see it. I mean, that's what the Internet does, right? It cuts out the middleman. Uh, and it's a beautiful thing. You know... Um, I, I listen to a lot of speakers and I do my own research and, and they, they all mention an interesting thing. The Internet has been out there for a while. What's been fairly new, which now it's becoming established as well, is social media. And really what crowdfunding is doing, it's adding the third layer of the Internet age, which is monetizing. Mm-hmm. Because crowdfunding really, the only way that, that you can raise capital is through the Internet, which means the, the primary venue of sharing your project, your idea, or your business is through social media. So, so if you think about it, crowdfunding is adding a very unique form of monetization uh, in the form of capital raising and capital formation through the Internet, through social media. And, um, and, and I know certain people that I've been speaking to. I'm trying to convince some social media gurus that I know, you guys need to start marketing yourselves as social media for crowdfunding because this is going to be a huge opportunity. And if you're known as an expert in that particular space, you're going to be very valued in this in this new age of capital formation. Very interesting. So this whole crowdfunding, the Kickstarter side of things, it's you know it, it's so funny. A friend of mine, she's raising money for a business here in town, and I kicked in a hundred bucks. And, you know, I don't think I'll ever get anything for it, uh, although the business looks like it is uh, going to be approved. Uh, so I'm sure there's some goodwill in there, right? But when I gave her that money, I basically just gave that money, right? <laughs> <laughs> these you know, are all donations. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the people who, who put their projects online on Kickstarter, they have an obligation and they have liability to fulfill what they say they're going to do, Right. But, but you as an actual donor, and, and whenever I've backed a project, I've backed over 70 projects myself because I truly believe in this industry and I want to support the ecosystem. Uh, what, what I, uh, when I donate, I, I, tr- I expect my reward to be there. I expect that to be there. But, but in reality, I'm, I'm mainly supporting the person raising the capital. If, if, if I see delays in the product being delivered uh, simply because it is a very tough uh, product development life cycle, things, things go wrong in, in uh, delivery all the time. So, I mean, I, 
I'm, if I wanted to buy a product just because of the product, I'd go on Amazon. But if I wanted to, you know, I want to support an entrepreneur, I want to support someone's dream, I'm willing to be more flexible in when the fulfillment will actually occur, if, if that makes sense. Sure. And, I mean, she's local, uh, and it's a business that I want to see started that I will use. Uh, so, I mean, I, I didn't do it to get you know, better seats or whatever. But, uh, you know, I am counting on her remembering that, uh, that she was asking for 25 bucks and I gave her a hundred. <laughs> so I am hoping I get a cut in the line sometimes. Hey, I, you know what? They, they, they should give you a special name tag, you know, <laughs> but it, but really that's all this crowdfunding is though, right? I mean, it's, it's truly a donation. People that just believe in a cause, uh, which makes it so much different than this equity crowdfunding. I mean, I'm not buying a stock or a share in her business. I'm just supporting her because I believe in her. You are absolutely correct. And, and I mean, it's more than just, it's more than that as well, though. Here's, here's another element to it, right? And, and, and we'll, get back, we'll get back to equity in a moment. But you, so you're absolutely correct with the fact that you believe in her and you want to support her. But crowdfunding also is doing something that is very special. Uh, but before the show, I mentioned that we're redesigning our website, and uh, the, the web developer who who's working on it, we, we hired a new web developer. Uh, she was doing a great job. We were almost done with the website, and then uh, literally last, uh, I think it was three days ago, a, uh, a gas explosion occurred and completely destroyed her home. Like, like if you see the pictures of this thing, it's like completely decimated. Um, it, it's almost like her home is not even there anymore. The foundation is just the only thing left. Um, and so, you know, because we've been working with her and, and because we, you know, she knows we're doing crowdfunding, she immediately put it in her mind to, to utilize her network and put up a, a crowdfunding campaign. And so she put up a crowdfunding campaign to raise $8,000 on one of the websites known as GoFundMe.com. And she asked for $8,000 uh, through her social capital that she's built up over the years during this time of need. Uh, she, she showed the picture of the house. She showed all the news stories that this indeed happened. It was it was a legitimate need. Within four days, she raised eight thousand dollars. Nice. And so, it's not only about helping an entrepreneur who has a need to start a business or or to create art or something like that. This is a direct way to give to someone who has a need, where you you really cut out. In certain cases, you could cut out a nonprofit that a lot of times. Even though I love nonprofits, a lot of times most of their money goes toward operating expenses, where in this case, you're literally helping the person who has a direct need. Right. Yeah, there's a ton of nonprofits that are terrible. Uh, you know, I mean, with single-digit efficiency, right, with far money reaching the, the intended uh, recipients. So, uh, you know, hey, we all, you, you become more efficient or you go away. Right. That's just life. People want to bemoan, you know, robots in auto manufacturing, whatever. But it's like, give me a break. It just it is, you know, uh, we're going to progress. So, you know, I, I like it. But when, when does somebody know that they have an idea worth crowdfunding? I mean, you know, we get a lot of salespeople, uh, small business owners, entrepreneurs listen to this. Um, is eight thousand a normal amount? I mean, should somebody try to raise fifty thousand dollars because they want to expand their building or you know their storefront? Or, I mean, what what is crowdfunding worthy? Well, here here's the thing, right? What uh, when people hear about crowdfunding, and I hope anyone listening to your podcast here will will take this from everything that I just said. It is not a magic pill. Uh, crowdfunding is not this magical place where you have an idea one week and you post it online the next week and suddenly the internet angels are coming down and saving you. I mean, this this, this, this isn't how it works. I mean, crowdfunding, if, if you really want to know what I believe it is, it is another way that if you got declined by a bank or if you don't have the VC capital, it's another way to market yourself, to market your dream, to market your business, your product, your art. But with marketing a business, a project, an art uh, endeavor, or a film, it is really a marketing and communications program. They don't call it a crowdfunding campaign for nothing. This is a campaign. And so what I will say is this. If you have an idea that you believe is worthy, and no one can really tell you 
you know, if your idea is worthy or not. Because bottom line is, it's all about social capital. It's it's about how long and, and how much you plan and, and how effective you are at communicating what your vision is. And if you can get a, a large group of people to believe in what you believe in, it could be as simple as, you know, I, 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 I want to create a reality TV show about crowdfunding. Because I'm not sure if I told you that, Wes, but we're going to crowdfund our own reality TV show about crowdfunding. Right. So, I mean, Fantastic. you know. Yeah, so, so someone might say, is that a crowdfund-worthy idea? And, you know, I, I would say for me it is. And I've actually been speaking with a lot of people who also believe in what we're doing. So, really, there is no limit. So long as you can motivate, inspire a, a large audience to support you and, and to to really look at your relationships and convince them that this is something that you truly believe in, I, I honestly believe the sky's the limit. Uh, what's the largest crowdfunding you've seen as far as one project well you know one one of the most interesting ones which is always uh which is always commented on uh you, you might you may have heard of the pebble watch and they they had a prototype of their watch which is really a uh, a digital watch that syncs just about any kind of uh social platform to the watch whether it's your iphone your tv your computer it all syncs it to your watch so the pebble watch they asked for a hundred thousand dollars on kickstarter and um they had so much demand based on the rewards they were offering. So they were obviously offering their finished product, their watch as the reward to entice people. They had so much demand that even though they only asked for $100,000, they raised $10 million. <laughs> it, is, it is one of the most incredible stories because what they essentially did was they filled their order books for months on end with all these enthusiastic people who wanted their product, then they only ask for 100000 but just because you reach your funding goal on Kickstarter, as long as people continue to donate and you still have time in your, uh, in your funding period, uh, you can continue to raise as much capital as, as necessary. Okay, so how does that work? You, they, they, they pick hundred grand, and do you pick like 30 days, 90 days, a year? I mean, what's, what's the window? So, so each website does it a little bit differently. But since, since we're talking about Pebble Watch and Kickstarter, we can kind of say how they do it. But then I'll give you an example of, of a different way. So Kickstarter, right now the, the longest you can do is, is two months, which is 60 days. Okay. But you can, you can effectively choose any, any time period you want. But the, but the interesting part about Kickstarter is they are a platform known as an all-or-nothing platform, meaning... If you don't raise your total funding amount, so when you first start your project, you you set your goal for how much you want to raise. So if you say ten thousand, in an all or nothing platform like Kickstarter, if you raise nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine, right, that means you will get none of the ten thousand. I would call my mom and ask her to donate a dollar. <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know it's so uh, that money sits in escrow basically. That money, yeah, it's, it sits in escrow until the project goal is fully met. However, if the goal is not met in that situation where you only raise $9,999, right. that money is returned to the individual contributors if the funding goal is not met. Okay. Now, an alternative, which also seems to be Kickstarter's um, largest competitor, is uh, Indiegogo, which is another crowdfunding website. Indiegogo gives you two different options uh, of funding. One is the all-or-nothing approach, but anyone who goes to Indiegogo never does all-or-nothing for the most part because they're more they're more excited about this other option. They have a keep what you raise option. So, if we take that same example of trying to raise ten thousand, but you raise nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine, on Indiegogo you will get to keep everything that you raised. Very cool. And so, do they sorry. have a a longer window i mean can you set 90 days or you know in, in this case i believe it's uh i believe it is 90 days i'd have to research that because i'm i'm personally going to use kickstarter okay. uh, for, for reality crowd tv but um there are higher fees with the keep what you raise platform and and the other the other thing of it is this you might be asking yourself why would i ever go to a uh you know only um, an all-or-nothing platform like Kickstarter over a platform that allows me to keep what I raise. And there, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, if you're saying you need $10,000 and um, and you don't hit that goal, 
like, can you really go out and set out, do what you what you said you were going to do? Like, if it, if you say you need ten thousand and you only raise five thousand, um, to me that's a huge gap between the funding. So, like, can you really still do what you set out to do, or are you just taking people's money and and you're not going to to actually follow through? That's right. That, that's one issue I have with it. Um, the other issue is. In, uh, in an all-or-nothing campaign as well, uh, b- because the stakes are so high, at least for me personally, I'm motivated to really go out and, and market myself, market market the company, and market my product if I had one as, as far as you know, a physical product if I was a manufacturer. Mm-hmm. It gives me the incentive to really go out there and, and do what's necessary and be the entrepreneur worthy of getting funded. Right. Um so, so that's that's kind of my my example on that. But at the same time, there are other reasons for Indiegogo. I mean, if you have a project where you want ten thousand, but you only raise five thousand, if you can actually still do something with that five thousand, right, and, and make progress towards your ultimate goal, and maybe try again later, then then that's a reason why you'd go there. But you know, there's there's multiple reasons and, and benefits to each platform. Yeah, so I, I pulled up Indiegogo just now. So basically, they're, they're going to take 9%, right, if you don't reach your goal. But then if you reach your goal, they refund 5%. So your net funding fee is 4%. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and is Kickstarter similar? I believe Kickstarter is only 5% regardless. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there... What's the smallest you've seen? Uh, the smallest, actually, no. I've I've seen someone just try to raise five hundred dollars. I mean, there was a little, uh, there was an artist who was trying to. Uh, oh, are, are you saying the smallest funding fee? No, no, that smallest amount raised, like five hundred oh. bucks. So, I mean, is that somebody just really struggling, or what? I mean, that seems like a very small amount. It it is a very small amount, and and really, it was just it was just a very small time artist who was uh, was really trying to market her very uh, unique uh, art in a very small way, and, and she needed five hundred dollars to really go ahead and do her net art her next art project. Right. Uh, but all you know, but but what she did was she was offering her existing art as the reward to fund her next artistic endeavor. Gotcha. So it was just kind of a nice way for her to. Not only you know monetize the work that she's done, but also fund her next project. And someone who's who's passionate in the arts and and in that in that type of endeavor, it's it's just a great tool for them to use to really you know monetize the work that, that they've done. So so this company Pebble, they ask for a hundred grand, and they get what is that a hundred times more than they wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a timeline? I mean, it, it takes time to ramp up and fulfill all those orders. You know, I mean, are, are people just that do this, are they basically good-natured and they just understand, hey, there may be a delay, I want to be part of it? You know, I mean, because good grief, that a hundred times, right? That It could take, if, I was, if they were saying, hey, you'll get your product within 90 days, but now it could be 900 days. Right, just doing simple math. Obviously, they can ramp up, scale up, but uh, I mean, is that the risk you run? Well, you know, you you raise a very good point, and um, and so what what you also hit upon is at each reward level. So so let's say at the hundred dollar contribution level, they got one Pebble watch, right? At each reward tier, the project creator must give a timeline they, they say that we we expect to fulfill this reward by december 2014 right if december 2014 comes around and they cannot fulfill at that time it then becomes a communications issue where where the the project creator who has promised to deliver in december really now needs to do a very good time of managing expectations because in some cases which really it's it's also up to the consumer to do some research as well before they just before they just donate in some cases what what i see occurring is um they just had a prototype that they didn't actually have a physical product created before they they put their product as a reward right. so they're they sometimes scramble to create a product that they conceptually had but they didn't physically make the product yet so in in those cases 
they might have to find suppliers out of China. They may have to hire uh, fulfillment companies to help them design everything they're trying to do. So they they may run into delays simply because they they really created a, a concept and not a physical product. Right. And, and in those cases, when you see certain news outlets trying to uh, give that company press, you want to do your research to ensure that the the companies that are giving this company press have actually seen the physical product and used it. Um, and that will help consumers not experience huge delays because if they already have a physical product that works and someone's actually seen it, used it, and actually has said that it's a decent product, in that particular instance, I believe that the fulfillment timelines will be fulfilled much more often than not. To, um, and, and if I have a moment, I'd, I'd like to give you an example of what sure. I saw here at, uh, at South by Southwest. Sure. Uh, there was a project that was raised in, uh, in 2009, uh, or rather in 2010 on Kickstarter. It was called the InstaCube. It was, um, it was an Instagram uh, picture frame, essentially, where you had a picture frame, and it took the feed from Instagram, which is your photo sharing site, and it just transmitted it to a picture frame, and they called it the picture crew, the, the InstaCube. Now, it's a great idea, but that's exactly what they did they they used visual effects to show their prototype as to what it would look like and how it would work, but they never physically made the product. The actual box that they showed that was supposed to house all the technology was just a cardboard box with visual effects added to it. So they they put this on there. They raised they asked for two hundred and fifty thousand. They raised six hundred thousand, which was an astronomical success back in two thousand and ten. But just now. Just now, did they come around fulfilling the actual promise that they made? And so 2010, two years later, they're fulfilling the promise. And, you know, it, it, they promised it within six months, and it's been two years. Two years or four years? Because you said 2009 and 10. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I forgot it's 2014. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. Catch up. You've been partying too hard at South by Southwest. I believe I have for sure. <laughs> Man, what I mean, it's bad. Like sometimes I forget what day it is, but you just missed two years, dude. We gotta talk. You know, I want to hang out with you. This is fear and loathing in Austin, Texas, right now. Forget <laughs> Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! Four years. That's uh, well, to me, that seems like a simple product. You're basically looking at a at a Wi-Fi enabled, uh, or you maybe even cellular, but Wi-Fi enabled. A uh, little mini tiny iPad. I mean, good grief! Why does it take four years to make that? You know, it, it, it was a good question, and, and in fact, the the panel that I that I saw the the actual product being talked about on was uh, it was actually called "How I Successfully Created a Crowdfunding Scam," Ooh. and 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 I mean, it, it wasn't really a scam, but in other words, a lot of people probably thought it was because it took so long for them to fulfill it. Right. But the the, the interesting thing was. As this, as this young lady who ran the campaign, she used to work for the company, and she had to leave because she, she couldn't stand the fact that they weren't, you know, they, they were taking their time to fulfill the orders. Like, she was getting hate mail. She was getting threats. Like, it was, it was a bad thing for this young lady who ran the campaign for them. Right. But, uh, but the funny thing was, at the end of the panel, and, and this, wasn't, this wasn't staged, at the end of the panel, Instacube came in and started showing the actual physical product because they just started fulfilling it, and they knew she was going to bad mouth the company right so Institute flew their people in to south by southwest and right at the end this lady came up during the question and answer period and said well we're from Institute, and here it is <laughs> uh, uh, it's it, funny. And, uh, so i just did a search for Institute, and one of the phrases you know is obviously kickstarter but one of the others is fail <laughs> <laughs> exactly so you know it's 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 one of those things that um not only do project creators need to ensure that they're living up to their end of the bargain, that's the most important piece, but consumers also need to, you know, look at it in, in a different way. If, if, you're, if you're going online to purchase a product and you're using Kickstarter to do it, then do your research on the product and do your research on the company. Have they, have they done anything like this before? Uh, do they have any other products out there? Um, has anyone physically tested the product? I mean, as a consumer, there, there's a certain level of bonus on, on a consumer that they need to do their research. But also, like you said, you, you gave the, the $100 donation and said, I'm just giving that money. I'm not expecting anything in return. 
Um, you, you have to mix those two mindsets together when you're when you're donating to a Kickstarter product based project. Right. You know. So how how does somebody get started? You know, let's say I've, I've got listeners here. Uh, you know, many are entrepreneurs. Um, I, I don't know. What, maybe somebody's a web designer and they want to branch out on their own, leave corporate America. I mean, is that viable? Could they say, I want to raise twenty five thousand dollars to buy a 27-inch iMac and a bunch of Adobe Suite software and run some PPC ads to drive traffic to build a website? I mean, it, or, or is it typically like that artist? It's kind of like that, but, I mean, is it typically somebody has a, a gadget that they want to fund? Well, you know, that is what we're trying to change ourselves with Reality Crowd TV. I mean, we, we don't have a gadget, but what, what we do have is information, uh, what, what we do have is is a show. What we do have is is digital copies of the show that we're going to end up producing when, when we raise our actual capital. But to go back to your website uh, website developer example, I've actually written about this, and um, the Entrepreneur Handbook is is a publication that is going to publish a, a, a guest blog that I wrote about this. But I believe the next frontier is skills based crowdfunding, and what I mean by skills based crowdfunding. Take that web developer as an example. If he wants to leave corporate America and, and purchase those goods and um, and run those advertisements for his business, and he needs to raise $25,000, then what he's going to use as his rewards are the skills of his company, the skills of his business, the skills that he already possesses. So in my opinion, you know, a reward for him might be for a $50 contribution, I'll create a website for you. For a $150... I will buy that. Yeah, me too. That's that's cheap. <laughs> that's definitely cheap. But you know, these the, to me, there's so many applications here, especially when you have to create a video as part of your crowdfunding campaign. Um, so statistics show that you know campaigns with a video are much more successful than campaigns without. And here's the reason: this this web developer can show a personal side to him, show that he's a, he's a diligent worker showed the reason why he's going to raise the money and, and kind of connect with his audience more personally. And with those skills that he has, like it, he can certainly raise capital this way. It's just a matter of, of finding a way to market it in such a manner, connecting with his traditional network, which will ultimately drive the success of his campaign just as much as his social network will. Um, and, and I believe skills-based crowdfunding may even have the potential to help people who are currently unemployed. Uh, if, it, sure. if you think if you think about it, I mean, you know, unemployed people are looking for jobs to, to use the skills that they've learned over time in a traditional working environment. Why not try to become self-employed and market your skills while you're looking for a job by engaging in a crowdfunding campaign? Sure. I mean, and, it, it makes total sense because, yeah, I mean, we all know the the value of certain services, whatever it is we regularly consume, right? I, I know... Uh, building a, a decent little website could easily run a thousand bucks. You know, it could be five thousand uh, bucks with no problem, right? So if somebody's accomplished and they say, "Hey, you know, I'm trying to raise ten grand to launch my own web design company," and you know what, I will build you a five-page, you know, WordPress uh, premium, you know, theme uh, for a five hundred dollar donation, and they've got a few examples. I mean, bam, that's only 20 clients. And now they get 20 clients, uh, they bang out some work, they're unemployed anyway, so they have the time. Now they have 20 happy clients to give referrals and testimonials. I mean, and, and you're turning it around. The thing I love about this, this is the advice I've always given people since I learned it, and it was earth-shattering for me, but it was sell your product before you make it. You know, so, I mean, I've done that multiple times as I release new membership sites and programs. You know, I'll do a pre-release. Uh, my, uh, my first book, I mean, I pre-sold it. Uh, you know, I sold it at InfusionCon in March of 2012, your favorite year. Uh, and, um, and I didn't, I said I would have it ready in July, and I wasn't finished till September. But because I pre-sold it, uh, I finished it. You know, if if I hadn't pre-sold it, man, I would have just it. It was hard. <laughs> I would have just said, "Oh, screw it, never mind." Uh, so this is basically the same thing, right? Because people can sell it just like Instacube. Sell it before you build it. This is exactly right. This is this is really just in time production. Uh, but basically, pre-selling allows you to create something just in time. You don't you, you don't overcreate. You just create exactly what is what is asked for, and um, 
And and like you said, just going back to that developer example, you're right. It's 20 clients, but not only is it 20 clients who want the service that that individual is offering, they also get the satisfaction that they are helping him create his own business and freeing him from the corporate shackles of corporate America. Right. I mean, so 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 it's not just. Um, and don't get me wrong. I I am not. I, you know, I, I think all employment is good employment, but if you're an individual who's employed and you're miserable through the, through the corporate structures, then this is really a potential avenue for you to take to really free yourself to live a much more fulfilling life as a, as your own boss. Yeah, very cool. So when um, when are you doing your uh, crowdfunding for your TV show? Well, you know, here's here's the thing. The, the crowdfunding campaign piece of, of crowdfunding is the most rigorous thing I've ever had to go through in my life, uh, especially because not only am I creating a reality TV show about crowdfunding, but I'm also creating a business. And so when, when I'm launching both a crowdfunding campaign and a business at the same time, it is... Uh, it is very um, it is very hard because there there are two separate things that you have to both juggle and and really it takes a huge team. Right. So we, we initially thought we were going to launch in January of two thousand and uh, January of two thousand fourteen. We thought we were going to launch then. Uh, we then thought we were going to launch in February, but we we assessed that we weren't ready. And finally, what what we're going to do is once we get our Kickstarter profile approved, we're going to use Kickstarter.com. We're going to wait one more month after that point. To assure, to ensure that we actually have enough time to rev up our our close contacts to, to really support our crowdfunding campaign, because the interesting piece of this is, if you raise thirty percent of your funding goal, and our funding goal will be thirty six thousand dollars to create a thirty uh, to create a fifteen minute pitch video that we will then pitch to reality TV show producers. The thirty six thousand dollars, if we don't raise thirty percent of that within the first week. The chances of raising the rest are very dismal, but if you raise 30% of your funding goal within the first week, you have a 90% chance to raise the remaining funding. Oh, cool. That's just statistics that you've seen? That's that's the statistics that I've seen. That's the t- statistics that the industry is is really p- publishing. A lot of professionals are, are repeating that statistic. And yeah, if, if you raise 36% of your funding within the first week, you have a 90% chance of success. Nice. Very cool. So that's going to happen for you in another 60 days? I would say another 60 days. So we're, we're filming the actual program, uh, the actual Kickstarter video this, this weekend. Right. And, uh, and then we're going to end up doing uh, one more month once it's approved. So I'm hoping end of April is going to be our day. Very nice. Well, um, we will get this podcast out and help you spread the word. Uh, what's the best way folks can find you? You gave me a few domains, right? It's at youraveragejoevc.com? Yes, yeah, so youraveragejoevc.com is my personal blog. Okay. Uh, to actually go to the website of our, our reality TV show, you can go to realitycrowdtv.com. Yep. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm very open. I'll, I'll give you guys my phone number. My, my phone number is 203 232 Two four six two. That's two zero three two three two two four six two. I love just chatting with anyone about crowdfunding. It's a passion of mine, and uh, and if we could help you in any way as well as as you embark on your own crowdfunding journey one day, we'd be happy to just chat with you and, and uh, share with you what, what we've been learning on on the road. Well, on uh, on April sixteenth, we're having our seventh baby, so uh, I, I want to crowdfund babysitting. All right, and what what I'm thinking is uh, I can loan my kids and my dog out to, like, single people if they want to, like, take them for a walk in the park because I heard, like, they can, um, especially guys, they have, like, a little kid or a dog. It helps them uh, meet women. What do you think? Can, can we fund that? I, I, I think so. And um, and you know what? Uh, may, maybe I could be the babysitter. I know we just met. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I could offer my services as a reward. All right. Well, <laughs> Well, my boys, you don't want to take them out because they'll scare people away. Big, beefy, meat-eating kids. But, you know, the baby, uh, you know, my youngest, she's six. She's still cute. You know, people come up. So, I mean, that might work, you know. Maybe even the nine-year-old. There you go. Hey, I, I'm telling you, you, you know, if it, anything within your imagination will definitely work for crowdfunding. <laughs> Very nice. Well, thank you for taking the time. Uh, Even though you're in a crowded restaurant, I appreciate you finding a a quiet corner 
um, tell everybody in Austin, say, gig them, Aggies, all right? Don't, don't let those Longhorns uh, take over. Oh, we just lost you. No, no, I'm here. Oh, I, you're there. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll just be considerate because it is a little... I apologize. <laughs> I, I, will, right, I will definitely, uh, I will definitely say that. And uh, and Wes, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity. All right, have a great trip. Thanks, Manolis. Thank you. Bye. Is crowdfunding right for you? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But um, I've always heard the excuse, you know, that oh, I didn't have enough money to launch my idea, launch my business. Well, that, that's not an excuse anymore. If your idea is any good then you should be able to get money, even in small quantities, to at least kickstart things, right, so you can begin the journey of growing your business. Uh, But most people, they go about things all wrong. They try to raise all this money. They spend all this time um, creating an idea before they know if it'll sell. One of the biggest differences in my life in business came when I realized I could sell something before it was ready. Uh, and actually take the payments. You can hold them in escrow. Obviously, you can give them their money back uh, if you don't launch on time or whatever. But go get the money. See if the thing will sell. Uh, Wireframe that thing out. Build it out. Build out what it's going to be. If they can do it in real estate, why not with your idea? Okay, give people a discount, an early bird uh, promotion for signing up early. Uh, And obviously, depending on what it is, but even physical products, I've seen things take years to come to market. Uh, Now, that's not ideal, okay, but it can take that long, and it has worked for good ideas. Uh, So if you've got something, if you really think it's worthwhile, go figure out how to sell it. If you need help selling it, find somebody that knows how to market and sell. Give them a big chunk, okay? So, you know, it's better to split up something than have 100% of nothing, uh, and, and it's another thing. Once you realize that, once you realize making money is the easy part, okay, dividing up the money, that's the easy part. You know, figuring out the right idea, figuring out what the marketplace wants, okay, that's the magic. Because once you have, uh, once you know what the market needs, what they want, what they're willing to pay for, then you can make all the money you want and need to make. All right, so no more excuses. Uh, again, check out. Um, the saleswhisperer.com forward slash session 52 uh, for the links and the show notes from uh, today's call. And if you need to automate your sales and marketing the way that I've done over the last six plus years, ever since 2008, uh, please visit the saleswhisperer.com, sign up for a demo of Infusionsoft, and we will be in touch. And I'll show you how uh, I have not needed to raise any money. Uh, you know, I provide it for a family now of, um, almost nine. So in a couple of weeks, I'm recording this on April 2nd, uh, April 16th, our seventh baby will be here. So the family of nine, my wife has stayed home for 18 plus years. Uh, so we didn't have an extra income to rely on. You know, I had to make this transition into owning my own business, uh, while building the business at nights and weekends, Okay, and I had to generate the income while I was sleeping so I could make that transition. Uh, So if you want to see how I did it, like I said, check out thesaleswhisper.com, sign up for an Infusionsoft demo, and we'll be in touch. And remember, as always, to sell different.